we're going to give you the builder's guide for running a successful construction company. When you get done watching this video, you're going to be inspired to think about the key concepts that we've explained and make sure that you have those in your company and you filled any holes that could create risk and cause you problems. You're going to love this video. So I'm going to give you the list of things that you must have to run a successful construction company. The most important measurement for a successful business and a preview of most businesses don't have, which causes them so much heartache. I don't want that heartache for you, so stay with us in this video. All right, let's get started. I was asked the other day, Jason, what are the key concepts that every business, meaning construction, every business, department, or project should have? Like, what are the main things? And I was like, wow, that's such a good question. So I sat back and I'm like, okay, what are the patterns that I get to see? Because I've been flying across the nation for a couple of decades now and been able to observe these things. And I'll share with you the information that I shared with him. All right, all right, number one, number one. The amount of people in key seats. This is probably my favorite. Uh, this is Jim Collins in a book called Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0. He says in the book, what is the single most important key performance indicator of any business? And he says, the number or the percentage of the right people in key seats. And he says, key seats are seats where success in the seat could mean quite a bit of profit or success for the company or a failure in that seat could open the company to a considerable amount of risk. And so on your leadership team, the number one KPI, I'll just say should, that you should be tracking, is the percentage of the right people in key seats. And if you're having a hard time analyzing this, please reach out to me at Jason S at elevateconstructionist.com because you can do the keeper test from Netflix culture. You can do the people analyzer from the entrepreneurial operating system, the book Traction from Gino Wickman, or you can answer the questions that I'm about to give you right now to analyze if you have the right people in the right seats. So let me ask you some questions and I'll just ask you right now. First of all, do you have the right person in the right spot? If you don't know, you know, using this concept of get the right people on the bus and the wrong people off and get the right people in the right seats, start to think about these questions. Number one, how has your impression of this person been in the last six months? Has their performance improved, been stagnant, or has it declined? Could this person in this seat create an unreasonable amount of risk? Could this person, if they were replaced, or this role, if actually succeed and cause a massive amount of success for that role and for the company? If this person quit tomorrow, and said, hey, so-and-so, you, I have accepted a different position for a different company, how hard would you try to keep them? If you start to analyze things like this, and this is in the book Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0, you'll understand if you have the right person in the right key seat. Okay, number two, as a part of your leadership team, you must have a visionary and an integrator, okay? And let me explain these right now. The visionary in your company is probably the entrepreneurial person, the person that's willing to take risks, that can sometimes be unreasonable, that sees very clearly where the business can go. There's a test uh, that you can download with Gino Wickman's, and actually I can put the link in the, for the test in the description, that you can find from Gino Wickman's book, What the Heck is EOS, or the book Traction. Uh, those will reference you to resources where you can take the test. But I'll tell you, at Elevate Construction, Kate, the CEO, tested very high as a visionary. She is always pulling us into the future. An integrator, on the other hand, is the person that builds the machine, that creates the systems, that's really able to get the vision implemented. In our company, the COO, Kevin Rice, tested very high as the integrator. With the both of them, we're always headed in the right direction. 
and with Kevin as the integrator, we're always maintaining standard and stable processes. So if you have a visionary, you can see where you're heading in the future. And if you have an integrator, you have the systems that are built so you can be successful along the way. So taking these two tests are crucial. I didn't score high on either of these. So they allowed me to be the president of the company and be the face, meaning the content developer or the subject matter expert. But every business must have a visionary and an integrator. Number three, every successful company, construction company and department must have a cohesive leadership team. And that leadership team, if put together properly and high functioning, will De define the clarity of where the organization is going, will scale that clarity, and will reinforce that clarity through human systems. This team will want to follow the principles and practices of the book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, and will want to scale clarity according to the book titled The Advantage. So that's the third key concept for running a remarkable construction company. And speaking of remarkable, I also have another tidbit. You wanna know how to run a remarkable YouTube channel? It's if all of the cool followers like and subscribe below and comment. That's how you do that. So just like over here, we gotta have some key things. You gotta have key seats, visionary and an integrator, good leadership team, right? YouTube channels gotta have likes. It's got to have subscribers and it's got to have comments. So please hook me up and we are going to get you some more cool content. Let's do this. All right. So now we're going to get into the good part. From an operation standpoint, you must be clear about how you do things. So step number four is you must have an operational system. And I'm going to, for a construction company, separate this out into two types. You must have a business system and you can only have one. And then you must have an ops system, meaning how you deliver your projects, how you deliver the product. So these systems are key. Now, if you have that system and like, for instance, let me just give you some, there's the Patrick Lencioni method or business model. There's the Jim Collins business model. There's kind of a, a combination of all of them. There's the Gino Wickman EOS model. There are a bunch of different business system models. There's models from Tony Robbins. You can find them anywhere, which you have to have one business system, one model. And for your operational system, it's comprised of how you do business and how you deliver that product and what key components are a part of that system to deliver that product. All of this has to be written down so I would say written, you have to train on it. And so it must be trained and communicated to the people. And then third, people must be accountable to follow the system. And so that is number four, really important. How you do business and how you do operations must be written down, people must know it, and they must be held accountable to it. And so let me go ahead and really close this strong in this way. When companies don't do this right, they don't have the right people in the right seats, in the right seats, meaning the right people on the bus, the wrong people off, and the right people in the right seats. It's either a family owned company and you have the wrong family members there, or you have some people that helped get the company to where it is today but they are no longer a fit and nobody is brave enough to replace or upgrade those seats. Most companies, when they fail, they do not have these two key spots, the visionary and the integrator. Number three, they don't focus on having a really key and cohesive leadership team that's high functioning that can number one, and you'll find this in Patrick Lencioni's book, build the team. Number two, create clarity. Number three, communicate that clarity. And number four, reinforce that clarity through human systems. The leadership team is what creates the clarity of where the business is going according to a business system and an operational system that everyone should know because it's written down and trained on and then everybody should be held accountable to it. Now, when companies fail, it's when they don't have this clarity, but second, 
they don't have the willingness to hold people accountable. So I would say probably the biggest consideration is this right here. If you want to have a jamming construction company, you must hold your people accountable in a respectful way. Otherwise, there is no way to make the kind of progress you want. If you don't have the right people organized in the right way, the right systems that will serve you and people following those systems because they're held accountable. And just one more thing, when companies really go through lean transformation or operational excellence transformation, they always lose about half of their people. I'd be worried if you haven't. If you're a company, a construction company that hasn't had through a transformation effort, a lot of your people leave and decide, hey, I'm not going in that same direction. I would say that this and this are not clear enough and nobody's holding them accountable because you need to make it very clear what we're doing and what we're not doing and hold the team accountable to it. And so this is where I see most companies fail. So I'll close out with also saying the obvious. Every company has a product. Every company has operations. Every company has marketing, finance, legal. You must pay attention to all aspects of the business and make sure that you have professionals in each of those seats, even if they're a consultant, an advisor, or a company that you've hired. And as you have the right people in the right seats with the visionary and the integrator, forming a cohesive leadership team with a successful business system, that you're holding everybody accountable to, you must monitor your business with clear and uh, visible metrics. Meaning, again, this whole I love numbers and numbers love me concept is true. You cannot run a business unless you can assess the health of that business. So monitoring the numbers is the final step to having a remarkable construction company. And so those are the main components. You might be like, hey, that's kind of high level. But I'm telling you, most people ignore that. And when we come in and do business consulting with companies, this is always the problem. It's always a communication problem mixed with one of these four. So we have to focus on these. In the description below, I'm going to link to you some of the best business books that you can use to really improve your construction company. And we've been through a lot of content and a lot of training on this. We're gonna put the best right here down in the description for you so that you can take your next step and assess these systems yourself. I really hope your construction company does well. We're here for you. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out those resources. You're gonna do great. The best is left to come. On we go.